This is Status Update the First for Project Retro Rack. I've made a start. It's not much of a start, but it is indeed a start. There's still a lot of empty space and a lot of cables that I've yet to use. But, you know, I've, I've not got everything yet. So this is what I do have. So far we've got the KVM switch and we've also got a VGA distribution amplifier. So just to explain quickly what these things do, uh, the distribution amplifier, this takes a VGA input, so a video input from, for example, a computer, and, well, it amplifies the output and does so across five different devices, or up to five different devices. I doubt that I'm going to be using all five at once at any point, um, but the option's there in case I do want to. Uh, but I needed this because I need to output to both the monitor here, and also to my OSSC, which is on the other desk. Um, so that's that. And we've also got a KVM switch. Now, if you're not aware of what this does, um, it, let me just see if I can show you around the back. Some of the cable runs are a little short, um, so it's been a little bit tricky getting this out. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the light is not good. We are underneath the desk, I suppose. Um, well, maybe you can just about make out the fact that there are VGA inputs on the back and a VGA output, the output of which is going to the VGA distribution amplifier. And there are also inputs and outputs for a keyboard and mouse because what this does is let you switch between different computers just by pressing one of these buttons. So. Assuming that there are, well, there's going to be two computers plugged into this by the time I'm done. Um, and say the XP1 is on number 1 and the 98 one is on number 2. If you want to use the 98 PC, just press 2. If you want to use the XP PC, the PC press 1. And it's as simple as that. So this is kind of the um, the central hub of the whole setup. And does the, th the very thing that I set out to do, which is be able to switch between PCs by at the flick of a button. There's obviously going to be a little bit more to it than that because, well, I need to turn the PC on first. And you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of empty space down here in which to put the PCs. Because the other goal of this was to have a single unit for everything. You may have noticed... Uh, <laughs> Just on that point that there are, yeah, there's a bit of a jungle back there and hopefully this setup will eliminate pretty much all of that because all the cables are going to be housed within this. There's going to be less output. So this is going to be outputting, I'm oh, sorry, this is going to be outputting. Uh, so there's going to be two cables coming from there. There's going to be network cables coming in and one power cable and that's it. So we won't have this. Oh, we're also going to have a bit of audio as well, but the thing is, it'd be much easier to take out and put back in because it's all going to central locations. Um, I think that just about covers it. Uh, well, obviously, we've got the rack as well, which is an important part. Looking a bit plain at the moment. Maybe, just maybe, um, I can find some stickers and things to adorn this thing with. Is that the right word, use of the word adorn? I'm not sure. Uh, one thing I do want to address, uh, I just want to turn this on so we can test these things. In fact, I won't turn it on yet, but I will turn them on in a second so I can demonstrate them in action. Not that it's going to look very exciting right now. But you, you may have uh, spotted that, well, yeah, there's a bit of a problem here. You see, this is a half width rack mount unit so it's still technically a rack mount unit because it is still one unit high but it only fills half the width and I thought okay well that, that'll be fine because I've bought a shelf that's got all these holes at the bottom that you can just about make out so that'll be ideal because this has all sorts of holes on the bottom as well it's riddled with them and naively I assumed well those holes are going to match up with those holes right uh -uh. they're I managed to get one hole to line up and then it was like over here or something. It was like in the middle of the the shelf and that's not really what I want. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. There's there's empty space here. Possibly I can fill that with something or just like blank it off. 
But the issue is the fact that this thing slides around like nobody's business. So I need to think of a solution to stick that in place. Thinking double-sided tape or like that Velcro stuff. Just something simple like that because there is a bit of clearance underneath it. Anyway, that's... Um, it's not super important really because I'm not going to be moving it around very much. But it would be nice for it to be, you know, stuck in place. <laughs> Just like this is. You see, it's it's screwed in at the side. Can't do that with this. Um, right, well, let's give this thing a try. So, the KVM switch, it's supposed to be powered by the computers that are plugged into it. Now, I'm assuming that only happens when you've got VGA and both PS2 leads plugged in. And at the moment, I do not. I only have VGA. You can get special KVM uh, cables which I do need to get because they are special KVM cables, I didn't realise. Uh, they're not super expensive, so I'll just need to order a few of them, and um, as well as a bunch of audio cables and some other bits and pieces. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, plug these things in and see what happens. So first of all, that goes on, simple as that. That's just a standard kettle lead. This, I can plug an adapter in, but it's one of these stupid barrel adapters. Um, again, I shouldn't think that I would need this uh, going forward. I might just have to bring it around the front for now. That looks ugly as hell, but I need to do this with one hand and um, try and find where it actually plugs in. It's somewhere around here. Where is it? Is it there? Ah, yeah. That was right. Uh, prepare yourself for the thermonuclear explosion that is the power LED. It looks so much brighter on the camera than it does to the naked eye. Okay, you may have also heard the VGA monitor uh, fire up there. Right, so it's settled on channel 1. Turn my computer on here. And hopefully we will see something on the screen. There we go. And um, I can actually confirm that OBS sees it too. The OSSC is very happy with the output. So all is well on that front. Uh, gives me a lot of confidence for going forward. So next, next update I should have a mixer, the audio mixer. And possibly I'll also have a computer in here. Because I've, I've got a case on the way. Um, I think that's all I've got currently. Um, so, I mean, there's obviously a few more bits and pieces that I need as well. And there is going to be a bit of open space at the bottom. So any ideas on what I can do with that, I'm open to them. But that's, uh, well, that's it for now. So I'll see you for the next one.